the earliest stringed instruments were mostly plucked, for example, the Greek lyre. Two stringed, bowed instruments, played upright and strung and bowed with horsehair, may have originated in the nomadic equestrian cultures of Central Asia, in forms closely resembling the modern day Mongolian Moran Hyur and the Kazakh Kobis. Similar and variant types were probably disseminated along east west trading routes from Asia into the Middle East and the Byzantine Empire. Several sources suggest alternative possibilities for the violin's origins, such as Northern or Western Europe. The first makers of violins probably borrowed from various developments of the Byzantine lyra. These included the VA, also known as the Fidel or Viola, and the Lira da Braccio. The violin in its present form emerged in early 16th century Northern Italy. The earliest pictures of violins, albeit with three strings, are seen in northern Italy around 1530, at around the same time as the words, violino, and violin, are seen in Italian and French documents. One of the earliest explicit descriptions of the instrument, including its tuning, is from the Epitome Musical by Hombi de Fer, published in Lyon in 1556. By this time, the violin had already begun to spread throughout Europe. The violin proved very popular, both among street musicians and the nobility. The French King Charles IX ordered Andrea Amati to construct 24 violins for him in 1560. One of these, noble, instruments, the Charles IX, is the oldest surviving violin. The finest Renaissance carved and decorated violin in the world is the Gasparo da Salo owned by Ferdinand II, Archduke of Austria and later, from 1841, by the Norwegian virtuoso Ole Bull who used it for 40 years and thousands of concerts, for its very powerful and beautiful tone, similar to that of a Garneri. The Messiah, or, Le Messi, also known as the, Salibu, made by Antonio Stradivari in 1716 remains pristine. It is now located in the Ashmolean Museum of Oxford. Significant changes occurred in the construction of the violin in the 18th century, particularly in the length and angle of the neck and a heavier bass bar. The majority of old instruments have undergone these modifications, and hence are in a significantly different state than when they left the hands of their makers, doubtless with differences in sound and response. But these instruments in their present condition set the standard for perfection in violin craftsmanship and sound, and violin makers all over the world try to come as close to this ideal as possible. To this day, instruments from the so-called golden age of violin making, especially those made by Stradivari, Garneri del Gesù, and Montagnana, are the most sought-after instruments by both collectors and performers. The current record amount paid for a Stradivari violin is £9.8 million, £15.9 million United States dollars at that time, when the instrument known as the Lady Blunt was sold by Teresio Auctions in an online auction on June 20, 2011. The violin, sometimes known as a fiddle, is a wooden cordophone, string instrument, in the violin family. Most violins have a hollow wooden body. It is the smallest and thus highest pitched instrument, soprano, in the family in regular use. The violin typically has four strings, some can have five, usually tuned in perfect fifths with notes G3, D4, A4, E5, and is most commonly played by drawing a bow across its strings. It can also be played by plucking the strings with the fingers, pizzicato, and, in specialized cases, by striking the strings with the wooden side of the bow, call legno. Violins are important instruments in a wide variety of musical genres. They are most prominent in the Western classical tradition, both in ensembles, from chamber music to orchestras, and as solo instruments. Violins are also important in many varieties of folk music, including country music, bluegrass music, and in jazz. Electric violins with solid bodies and piezoelectric pickups are used in some forms of rock music and jazz fusion, with the pickups plugged into instrument amplifiers and speakers to produce sound. The violin has come to be incorporated in many non-Western music cultures, including Indian music and Iranian music. The name fiddle is often used regardless of the type of music played on it. The violin was first known in 16th century Italy with some further modifications occurring in the 18th and 19th centuries to give the instrument a more powerful sound and projection. In Europe, it served as the basis for the development of other stringed instruments used in Western classical music, such as the viola. Violinists and collectors particularly prize the fine historical instruments made by the Stradivari, Garneri, Guadagnini and Amati families from the 16th to the 18th century in Brescia and Cremona, Italy, and by Jacob Stainer in Austria.
According to their reputation, the quality of their sound has defied attempts to explain or equal it, though this belief is disputed. Great numbers of instruments have come from the hands of less famous makers, as well as still greater numbers of mass-produced commercial, trade violins, coming from cottage industries in places such as Saxony, Bohemia, and Meyercourt. Many of these trade instruments were formerly sold by Sears, Roebuck & Co., and other mass merchandisers. The components of a violin are usually made from different types of wood. Violins can be strung with gut, perlon or other synthetic, or steel strings. A person who makes or repairs violins is called a luthier or violin maker. One who makes or repairs bows is called an archetier or bowmaker. Electric violins have a magnetic or piezoelectric pickup that converts string vibration to an electric signal. A patch cable or wireless transmitter sends the signal to an amplifier of a PA system. Electric violins are usually constructed as such, but a pickup can be added to a conventional acoustic violin. An electric violin with a resonating body that produces listening level sound independently of the electric elements can be called an electroacoustic violin. To be effective as an acoustic violin, electroacoustic violins retain much of the resonating body of the violin, and often resemble an acoustic violin or fiddle. The body may be finished in bright colors and made from alternative materials to wood. These violins may need to be hooked up to an instrument amplifier or PA system. Some types come with a silent option that allows the player to use headphones that are hooked up to the violin. The first specially built electric violins date back to 1928 and were made by Victor File, Oscar Bierling, George Eisenberg, Benjamin Meissner, George Beauchamp, Hugo Benioff and Frederick Kisslingbury. These violins can be plugged into effect units, just like an electric guitar, including distortion, wah-wah pedal and reverb. Since electric violins do not rely on string tension and resonance to amplify their sound they can have more strings. For example, five-stringed electric violins are available from several manufacturers, and a seven-string electric violin, with three lower strings encompassing the cello's range, is also available. The majority of the first electric violinists were musicians playing jazz fusion, e.g. John Luke Ponty, and popular music. The earliest references to jazz performance using the violin as a solo instrument are documented during the first decades of the 20th century. Joe Benuti, one of the first jazz violinists, is known for his work with guitarist Eddie Lang during the 1920s. Since that time there have been many improvising violinists including Stefan Grappelli, Stuff Smith, Eddie South, Regina Carter, Johnny Frigo, John Blake, Adam Talbots, Leroy Jenkins, and Jean-Luc Ponty. While not primarily jazz violinists, Daryl Anger and Mark O'Connor have spent significant parts of their careers playing jazz. The Swiss-Cuban violinist Yilian Conyserez mixes jazz with Cuban music. Violins also appear in ensembles supplying orchestral backgrounds to many jazz recordings. Like many other instruments used in classical music, the violin descends from remote ancestors that were used for folk music. Following a stage of intensive development in the late Renaissance, largely in Italy, the violin had improved, in volume, tone, and agility, to the point that it not only became a very important instrument in art music, but proved highly appealing to folk musicians as well, ultimately spreading very widely, sometimes displacing earlier bowed instruments. Ethnomusicologists have observed its widespread use in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. When played as a folk instrument, the violin is usually referred to in English as a fiddle although the term fiddle can be used informally no matter what the genre of music. Worldwide, there are various stringed instruments such as the wheel fiddle and Apache fiddle that are also called, fiddles. Fiddle music differs from classical in that the tunes are generally considered dance music, and various techniques, such as droning, shuffling, and ornamentation specific to particular styles are used. In many traditions of folk music, the tunes are not written but are memorized by successive generations of musicians and passed on in what is known as the oral tradition. Many old-time pieces call for cross-tuning, or using tunings other than standard GDAE. Some players of American styles of folk fiddling, such as bluegrass or old-time, have their bridges top edge cut to a slightly flatter curve, making techniques such as a double shuffle less taxing on the bow arm as it reduces the range of motion needed for alternating between double stops on different string pairs. 
Fiddlers who use solid steel core strings may prefer to use a tailpiece with fine tuners on all four strings, instead of the single fine tuner on the E string used by many classical players. Attaching a small metal, rubber, leather, or wooden device called a mute, or sordino, to the bridge of the violin gives a softer, more mellow tone, with fewer audible overtones, the sound of an entire orchestral string section playing with mutes has a hushed quality. The mute changes both the loudness and the timbre, tone color, of a violin. The conventional Italian markings for mute usage are con sword, or con sordino, meaning, with mute, and senza sword, meaning, without mute, or via sword, meaning, mute off. Larger metal, rubber, or wooden mutes are widely available, known as practice mutes or hotel mutes. Such mutes are generally not used in performance, but are used to deaden the sound of the violin in practice areas such as hotel rooms. For practicing purposes there is also the mute violin, a violin without a sound box. Some composers have used practice mutes for special effect, for example, at the end of Luciano Berrio's Sequenza 8 for solo violin. The violin is played either seated or standing up. Solo players, whether playing alone, with a piano or with an orchestra, play mostly standing up, unless prevented by a physical disability such as in the case of Itzhak Perlman. In contrast, in the orchestra and in chamber music it is usually played seated. In the 2000s and 2010s, some orchestras performing Baroque music, such as the Freiburg Baroque Orchestra, have had all of their violins and violas, solo and ensemble, perform standing up. The standard way of holding the violin is with the left side of the jaw resting on the chin wrist of the violin, and supported by the left shoulder, often assisted by a shoulder rest, or a sponge and an elastic band for younger players who struggle with shoulder rests. The jaw and the shoulder must hold the violin firmly enough to allow it to remain stable when the left hand goes from a high position, a high-pitched note far up on the fingerboard, to a low one nearer to the peg box. In the Indian posture, the stability of the violin is guaranteed by its scroll resting on the side of the foot. While teachers point out the vital importance of good posture both for the sake of the quality of the playing and to reduce the chance of repetitive strain injury, advice as to what good posture is and how to achieve it differs in details. However, all insist on the importance of a natural relaxed position without tension or rigidity. Things which are almost universally recommended are keeping the left wrist straight, or very nearly so, to allow the fingers of the left hand to move freely and to reduce the chance of injury and keeping either shoulder in a natural relaxed position and avoiding raising either of them in an exaggerated manner. This, like any other unwarranted tension, would limit freedom of motion, and increase the risk of injury. Hunching can hamper good playing because it throws the body off balance and makes the shoulders rise. Another sign that comes from unhealthy tension is pain in the left hand, which indicates too much pressure when holding the violin. 